Barakatah Yahweh, Barakatah Yahweh Shai, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone that rule well, and salutations unto you brothers out there pushing the truth of Yahweh Bashim Shai. This is a new series, Lord's Will, uh, I'm starting. Um, just a quick history videos. I don't know what I'm going to entitle it yet. Um, you know, however far the Spirit wants it to go. Um, I'm going to start off with this scripture, Jeremiah 51 and 35. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitant of Zion say. And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. You see? So this is retaliation. This is... Um, um, whatever, uh, recuperation, um, revitalization. This is justice at the end of the day. Um, all the violence done upon the Israelites, the blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and, and, and people descending from around the world, from that lineage, that, that royal stock, that violence is going to be put upon uh, uh, mainly Babylon. That's why uh, it's going to be a great violent destruction man and it's going to implode from within and then it's going to have an external force to cleanse it which is the missiles and and yahweh shai and the angels coming back with 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 concentrated fire that esau calls lasers so the point is there's a lot of violence that these devils did against us and in this um, segment i'm going to bring out just a little bit of that all right because this isn't even the tip of the iceberg this is a book called the Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 1, by the Nation of Islam. Now, this book right here is a very, very, very good book. Um, it goes into a lot. They always quote, they always have their footnotes at the end here. All right, like as you see. And you can go back to the back of the book, I believe, and check it out. Or even it tells you here in certain spots. So they really do back it up with a lot of information and history and, um, um, you know, authoritative uh, uh, by authoritative so-called people or right? so-called authoritative like scholars the authority figures but um so this is this is a uh, right here it says treatment and torture of the black slave I'm gonna read the underlying parts okay it says the English explorer Captain John Gabriel Stedman assisted the colonists in their wars with the Maroons which were Israelites the Maroons were Israelites and wrote a narrative of his expeditions. He described the black slaves in Suriname as being kept nearly naked with a diet of little more than a few yams and bananas. It says the slave woman must yield to the loathsome embrace of an adulterous and licentious manager, which is where a woman get that spirit from. That's why it tells you in uh, Amos 7, I believe, that thy wife shall be a harlot in the street, in the city. All right, because our women, <clears throat> they made that deal with Satan, man, from the beginning, from, from, from the garden with Eve. You know, but Esau keeps, you know, uh, uh, instilling that. Because they would rape the woman in front of the men to dehumanize the man. To where the psychological effect of the woman, when she looks at her man, is, is uh, what's that word? S uh, like a subject, basically. And Esau is, be is, 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 the, is the god. The white, so-called white man. It says, Or see her husband cut to pieces for endeavoring to prevent it. We couldn't do shit. This was our rulership being taken from us. This is us losing our rulership. That's why you, you, you jakes in the street, you can't do shit when cops uh, uh, harass you in any way, shape, or form. Many destroyed themselves by suicide, ran away. Of course you commit suicide. You, you're watching a woman get raped by a fucking caveman. <laughs> ran away, or if they stayed... They would grow sad and spiritless and languish under diseases because stress brings what? Disease. That's why in um, Saraka it tells you, give me any plague but the plague of the mind, you know, um, which rendered the patient a shocking spectacle. Many contracted tapeworms, sometimes two yards in length, and leprosy, which th that's a misinterpretation. Uh, because Esau, Esau tries to say that leprosy is, is a disease of, of, of uh, like your skin deteriorating or some bullshit like that. Which covers the whole body with, with scales and ulcers. The breath stinks, the hair falls off, the fingers and toes become putrid and drop away joint after joint. Hey Amen. that's Deuteronomy 28. That's straight curses, man. You know? 
The Lord shall bring every sickness and every plague in this book, and not even and, and plagues and sicknesses that are not even written in the book. It says the tortures were horrifying and included flogging, mutilation, hanging, and quartering, drowning, starving to death, breaking out of the teeth, stinging to death by mosquitoes and other insects, as well as burning alive at the stake. These sadistic tortures were performed seemingly for the sheer pleasure of the Caucasian master, slitting up their noses and cutting off their ears from private peak. These are counted mere sport. When one master died, the principal part of his slave were slaves were beheaded and buried along with him. There was one report of a Jewish woman who murdered a black woman by running a red-hot poker through her. The black slaves often chose suicide and at times would throw back their heads and swallow their tongue, choking them to instant death in the presence of their masters. The practice had become so prevalent that the Caucasians sought to prevent it by holding a firebrand to the victim's mouth. This method being prevented. Okay, and we go here to the next page. Page, uh, it's lucky that was page 45, 44, to 45. This is page 46. Okay, and this book really goes into um, this book goes into a lot of what the Khazars did. This mainly focuses on on your so-called Jews, you rap bastards, you Amalekites, you Edomites. All right. It says Jews, which were Khazars, the imposters, participated in these in these activities and sometimes led them. Stedman describes a remarkable scene he witnessed of a black man being broken alive upon the rack without the benefit of the coup de gras or mercy stroke a slow execution presided over a jew named devry the black man was laid upon a wooden cross with arms and legs expanded and was fastened by ropes the executioner himself a slave chopped off his left hand next took up a heavy hey amen this is some details man next took up a heavy uh, iron bar with which by repeated blows he broke his bones to shivers to them till the marrow blood and splinters flew about the field but the prisoner never uttered a groan nor a sigh the ropes being next un unlashed i imagined him dead and felt happy till the magistrate stern to depart he writhed himself from the cross when he fell on the grass and damned them all as a set of barbarous rascals Slakia, barbarous rascals at the same time removing the right hand by the help of his teeth he rested his head on part of the timber and asked bystanders for a pipe of tobacco which was infamously answered by kicking and spitting on him till I with some American seamen thought proper to prevent it purpose or Slakia, prevent it he then begged that his head might be chopped off but to no purpose at last, seeing no end to his misery, he declared that though he had deserved death, he had not expected to die so many deaths. However, said he, you Christians have missed your aim at last, and I now care not. Were I to remain thus one more, one month longer, after which he sung two extempor, extempor songs with a clear voice, the subjects on which, of which were to bid adieu, to his living friends and to acquaint his deceased relations that in a very little time he should be with them you see as jake they know about the spiritual realm to enjoy their company forever in a better place this done he calmly entered into conversation with some gentlemen concerning his trial relating every particular with uncommon tranquility but said he abruptly by the by the be sorry to be the cause i'll select you but said he abruptly by the sun it must be eight o'clock and by any longer discourse i should be sorry to be the cause of your losing your breakfast then sir it's like then casting his eyes on a jew whose name was devry a propose a proposer said he won't you please to pay me the ten shillings you owe me for what to do to buy meat and drink to be sure don't you perceive i am to be kept alive which speech, which speech on seeing the Jews stare like a fool, this mangled wretch accompanied with a loud and hearty laugh. Next observing the soldiers is that stood sentiment 
sentinel over him, biting occasionally on a piece of dry bread. He asked how it came to pass that he, a white man, should have no meat to go to eat along with it, because I am not so rich, answered the soldier. Then I will make you present, sir, said the negro. First pick my hand that was chopped off clean to the bones, next begin to devour my body till you are glutted. When you will have both bread and meat, as best becomes you, which piece of humor was followed by a second laugh, and thus he continued until I left him, which was about three hours after the dreadful execution. All right, you see that? So these are just little small examples, man, of uh, things. I'm going to bring up more information from this book, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Willing. Um, that was just, again, quick history class lesson. Um, I want to say all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors unto the apostles of GMS that rule well, and salutations unto you brothers out there. Until next time, Shalom.